got a trusty Bic lighter. It's supposed to be trusty, come on. And these little fold up stoves here. <laughs> from the back of my house here on what they call Grassy Hill and you can probably see oops turn you the wrong way my mistake it's a pretty uh, pretty big grassy hill here and anyway, you can see this cut line laid out there in front of us I'm gonna follow that cut line just out behind that hill pick up uh, part of Leg five on the death race trail. I'm going to follow that back down to the river there by Hell's Gates. It's uh, it's where the uh, Sulphur River meets the Smoky River, and there's like a little campsite and stuff down there. I'm going to go down there and light a little fire. I've got a new uh, TP hot tent I just received in the mail there, so I'm going to set that up for the first time. Um, and yeah, that's my plan. So I'm gonna dodge down over this hill here. The sun just came up, it's 10 after 10. There's the uh, prison down there. Yeah, so we'll head down and hopefully it's gonna be a nice day. It's about minus 14 right now. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm part way down the hill. You can see the Smoky River Valley down in here. So uh, we'll connect to the Smoky River just a little farther along the, the river there, a little farther upstream. Yeah, so I've got myself a One Tigress, which is the brand name, uh, Smoky Hut TP Hot Tent. So that comes without a stove jack, so the stove jack hasn't arrived yet, and I need to get to uh, I need to get out to uh, a hardware store because they don't carry them here in town, and I need to pick up some uh, ducting end caps. I'm going to do a DIY uh, collapsible tent stove, so I can build it for about 60 bucks. Now you can buy titanium stoves but they run you like <laughs> between four and five hundred bucks so just for a couple of times a year that I, I might use it I think I'm just gonna build my own for about 60 bucks or so okay so uh, if you look out see the ground drops off there you can see the frost on the trees so we're out at the crest of the hill at the end of this cut line, which runs back through there. And back through the trees, you can see, yeah, uh, probably won't make it out on this video, but Grassy Hill is there, you can just see the edge of it. Now this here is a road that goes back towards the uh, prison. And then you can turn off there and go around Sulphur Rim Trail, which I was around there last year. I had a video out on that. Saw some cougar tracks and stuff down there. I had a little fire. It's just a little quad trail goes out there, and I think it goes out to one of these little meadows on the side of the hill. Anyway, we're going to go down here. It looks like somebody was on a mountain bike here. See a mountain bike trail track. Anyway, I've been had to ditch the shades because uh, 
since I came halfway down over Grassy Hill, I've just been in the shadow of the landscape and the trees. The sun doesn't get high in the sky this time of year. So, look out there now, it'll just kind of skirt above the tops of these mountains here. And about four o'clock, a little after four, it just disappears. So. I'll drop right down into the river valley here. Hopefully it's not too icy. There's a little bit of quad trail. Uh, someone's been down there in a quad or side by side. So There's not a big lot of snow here, which is good. Easy for navigating. And the yak tracks are helping with the little bit of icy conditions underneath. So. Yeah. We've got several big trees now that blew down. I don't know when, I haven't been down here in over a year, but we did have some wicked, wicked wind a couple of weeks back. A lot of people had damage to the roofs and stuff in town, so it could have happened then. Here's some pretty big, kind of older trees, and the wind primarily comes down this river valley here, like from the southwest. So, uh, yeah, the trail's over there, so, you know, it looks like somebody tried to cut into this one here. I think you're going to need a chainsaw for that, pal. Axe. Just ain't going to cut it, so to speak. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> you can see how steep the hillsides are there. Coming down, there's like a little meadow up there. Anyhow, it's a beauty day. I haven't been gone too far, or too long, I mean. Probably only an hour or so. As, actually, as I'm coming down here, I'm thinking, oh, I think I got you tilted a little too far. Yeah, I'm thinking this might be a nice spot to uh, come down here on an overnight with the tent when I get my stove and stove jack rigged in. It's not too far from the house. Trail is pretty good as long as the snow is not deep. Right now you don't need snowshoes or anything, you know the trail is uh, easily passable. Whoop, whoop. Bear in places under the trees and just a couple inches of snow scattered about. On the cut line it was a little deeper, maybe four to six inches, but Pretty good size wolf track here. Looks like a little spot of blood in it there. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a wolf track. You can see level here, big steep hills. I just came down the big steep hill there. There's some rock faces over here through the bush. That would be where the uh, Sulphur River comes out, affectionately known as Hell's Gates in these parts, and for the death race. So this here is where, uh, where they cross the Smoky River on leg five of the death race trail. And then they follow this trail back up in and around the Sulphur Rim Trail and back into town to, uh, to finish leg five and finish the death race. Hear that, hear that crunchy snow crunching under my feet there. Nice and cool and crisp and the snow is, there's a little camping area here. And here's the river. Awesome. 
Let's go out here and have a look. Some ice floating down the river this morning. It's been cold last night, last couple of nights, cold and clear. Haha. Uh -huh. So, on top of these rock faces here, you can't see them, there's something shining just up above in the trees there. Not sure if you can see that or not. But that's a sign on one of the lookout towers. From over on the uh, Hell's Gates or Sulphur, uh, Sulphur Gates Provincial Recreation Area. There's a little walk around the area there. Popular spot for people to bring friends and family who come to visit and have a look down. Yeah, so this is this is the Smoky River coming from inside the Wilmore Park. That little spot up there just to the left around those rocks, there's that big island. You can't really see it. Maybe you can a little bit. When we were going to Maudsley there, that's where I flipped my raft and lost my original GoPro camera. <laughs> that's why I don't have any footage of the Maudsley trip. <laughs> but maybe I'll tell the story about that someday on a little, make a little video about that. I do have a little couple of little clips I, I, I took on my phone, but anyway. So yeah, there's the Smoky River runs on down this way. Grand Mountain in the background there. Nice big beach area. This is usually covered here in the spring. And there's some camping areas inside there. And this here is the Sulphur River coming down from this side here. So the Smoky comes down into this big rock formation and the Sulphur comes down through. It's like a big gorge. Steep rock faces all the way up through that river there for a number of miles. I think farther back in the country it flattens out a little bit back in there some around some meadows and stuff. But for the most part it's uh, pretty much a gorge type river. Lots of ice built up there, as you can see. They do white water rafting in this, so <laughs> you can tell that uh, right now it's very low. There's times you come down here and all this is just covered in water. All these beaches are just full in the spring of the year. And there's the sign, 110K in on a 125 kilometer trek. So if you go back up the way we just came down and then take the Sulphur Rim Trail back around to town, it's 15 kilometers. And that finishes off your, uh, your race. So you can see one of the lookout towers over there now. You might not make it, whoa, sorry. I'm not used to uh, moving this thing, especially with my gloves on. On top of that rock over there, there's a, you can see some it looks like hand railing and stuff there. That's a lookout up there. Very nice. This time of year is a different, a different look at things. Most times people are down around here in the summer, early fall, late spring kind of thing. So let's see if we can find a spot back in here and find us some wood, get a little fire going here, and uh, I'll try to set up my tent. Okay, so I just got a bunch of firewood there, but I just wanted to uh, talk about firewood for a minute. Um, you know, you don't need to go cutting down trees and stuff, you know, that's, that shit's not going to burn anyway, but like right here. See, we got a couple of trees that are blown down with the wind. The branches are holding them up off the ground. That stuff is dry. These branches, some of them are three quarters of an inch to an inch big around. You can cut them up. That's good burning to get your fire started. You know, like uh, these small dead branches like this kind of stuff, you'll see over there in the fire after. 
you know. That's good kindling to start with. And then you can build up to, you know, little sticks like this, this size, a little bit bigger. And then eventually you can go and cut up this tree here, you know, something like this, you know, three inches around or across, you know, once you get a good coal base and fire going. So as you can see, I've got a pile of this small kindling dead branches stuff in underneath there. And then a few sticks that'll be some chunkier wood once it gets going. Now, <laughs> to start the fire, that's another bit of a debate. People, I, I use homemade fire starters. So I've got these fire starters, which are egg cups, dryer lint. You can put a little bit of sawdust or whatever in there if you want. Um, these are just, I, I don't have them done completely right. They should be soaked right through with wax. That way they're 100% waterproof. So if you find yourself in trouble out in the rain, the water, you, you take an unexpected drink in the river, these are in your pack in a, in a Ziploc baggie. Even if they're just in there, they should stay dry. And believe it or not, I've done it, well, I've tested it, some of my buddies have been around, they say these will burn for about 20 minutes, and they do. They burn anywhere from about 18 to 25 minutes, depending on how thick they are, how much wax, and how much uh, material is in them. People say they don't have time for that stuff, and they use zip barbecue charcoal lighter. Now, I bought some of this here last week just to try it out. I, I know a lot of people use individually wrapped ones, this is just the brick that's supposed to be 32 squares. You can see a little seam right there. But I tell you what, man, I had this in my backpack for about a week inside a Ziploc bag. Everything in the top of my bag, my gloves, my hat, my, uh, my, my buff, just stinks like lighter fluid. So... I'm not a fan of that. I'm going to burn that stuff up today just to get rid of it. I like these for the simple fact that they're waterproof and I learned about these about 30 years ago when I did an outdoor safety and survival thing. And to be honest, like last time I made a bunch of these, I made about five dozen. My wife and I were sat out by the fire one night having a couple of drinks. I got the stuff. I just put a pot of wax on there, just old candle wax, odds and ends you have left over. Uh, fill up your, your 12 packs of or 18 packs of uh, egg carton with, with your stuff and slowly pour your wax in, let it soak in and to do it right as a, like I say, as a uh, survival item, they should be soaked right through with wax. That way they're hundred percent waterproof. But uh, I just use them like this for lighting the fire. And to be honest, you know, you really don't need to use these. If you've got good dry wood, you can just get a little ball of paper and light it and it'll work. Or you know, if you're out and you've only got a half dozen of these with you, you know, you can cut them in half and it'll burn for 10 or 15 minutes, you know, by just a half of one of these. So, I like them. I light, use them for lighting fires for years. And, uh, like I say, it's just something to do one night when you're sat out by the fire pit. But I'm going to get rid of these things today because, man, I tell you what, they stink. I don't know what the individually wrapped ones are like. They might be better. I'm not sure. I've never tried them. But, uh, anyway... That's my story. And again, your trusty Bic lighter should have two or three of these in the bag and, you know, way to go. All right, so let's try to light this thing. See what happens. So I'm gonna try to zip lighter fluid stuff here just you know, actually what I might do, just, just for the hell of it, is just try lighting some of this down on one side and light my other, light my other one over on the other side. Just, uh, just as a little experiment here. So yeah, that stuff definitely burns right away. Just lay that in underneath there and let it work its way up through. Go like this. I'll just lay it kind of to one side in here. Yeah, 
See, it burns a little bit more intense probably than the zip lighter. I don't know. Like I say, that'll burn for about 20 minutes. Now, as some of you guys know, whoops, wrong way again, or a lot of you guys know, I'm originally from Newfoundland, living in Alberta for a number of years. But if you can start a fire in Newfoundland, you'll have no problem starting one in Alberta. It's drier than a popcorn fart up here 90% of the time. Whereas back east, it's wet. Wet, foggy, drizzly, rainy. 90% of the time, you're in the bush. Especially if you're a hunter. You know, you're in the fall of the year. That's when you get a lot of wet weather. So, yeah. No trouble finding dry wood and getting a fire going here. Unless it's been raining for three, four days, then yeah, it's probably a bit of a bit of a problem. But usually get in underneath some of these big trees like this and pick up kindling. A lot of people camp here, but if you go in underneath here and pick up, look, see this little sticks and twigs and stuff. It's sheltered from the elements. It's usually dry in there. You can pick up, no trouble to pick up some dry kindling. Get yourself a fire going. Fire is everything, man. Especially when your name is Rick and you're in the Rockies. Yeah. Okay. So there's the one tigress smoky hut. TP tent. Anyway. This is it. set up sleeping accommodations over here on one side and up there is the tent jack or the stove jack sorry so the stove jack is just a uh, a piece of uh, fire retardant heat resistant material that velcros on to the outside there and your stove pipe goes up through and you just set your stove in in here on the ground oh I gone up the other way here Set your stove over here. Your stove goes here, you can put some wood in over here, and in the nighttime you can just keep stoking up your fire. Let's see, that's where the stove jack goes. Yeah. Pretty neat. I have to check this out here in the near future. Of course, I gotta get my stove and my stove jack first. Okay, while I'm on the fire kick, I might as well talk about utensils <laughs> and firewood. Okay, so I've got myself a little 14-inch uh, Fiskars uh, hatchet and one of these little uh, excuse me, one of these little fold-up stoves here. Now these are great; they're added weight. You know, if you're taking a pulk or something with you, like a sled to tow behind you in the winter time, when you're going camping, you know, you need extra gear. It's great to throw this stuff in, or even if you're just going on a backpacking trip for a day or two. But you can get and gather a lot of wood without either one of these. There's lots of small wood in most of the woods around here. And I'll just show you. I mean, everybody's done this, I'm sure. I don't know if I can set up my camera here so that you can see me but I'll try whoop so yeah you know I've got a stick here that's probably about an inch across so you just grab that put it on your knee snap off like that. you've got sticks here once it starts getting to the point where it's getting bigger Find yourself a couple of trees. A uh, couple of trees that are in close proximity to each other. Let's see if we can catch this on video here. I don't know if it'll work or not. There's the two trees here, one behind the other. Stick this stick out through here, and you just crack it off. See that? Pretty big. 
big here now, probably two inches, close to two inches across. No trouble breaking that there. Especially if it's dry wood and you've got it between a couple of big trees. So yeah, as handy as a little hatchet and a saw is, if you don't want the added weight, it's very easy to uh, break up some wood when you're out in the bush. And if you're out and it's a survival thing, I mean, you got nothing else to do. Moving around and breaking up wood is is good. If you got a shelter, you got fire going, you need to just make wood. You're just keeping yourself warm by moving. It's uh, perfect. So I just uh, packed everything up and took down the tent, put out the fire, and I just walked over here just up the uh, side of the Sulphur River a little bit. So you can see up there. See water running under the ice there. Still no sun here, and it's 1.30. Of course, we got this big cliff rock face here in front of us, so the sun is on the other side of that. You can see it out in the, uh, more out in the other river. So, as you can see, it's going to be uphill all the way. Which is probably why it didn't take me long to get down because it was downhill all the way. So, <laughs> anyway, a beautiful day. Spent a few good hours in the woods. With a nice fire. And checked out my new tent. And, uh, just get a bit of exercise on the way home. Sweet. So, just came across some uh, grouse tracks there. Let's see them going up through there. Got a few down through there, whatever. Across the trail right here. It's probably not too far. Rummaging around down in those leaves, probably. So, I was saying about some elk rubs, or not, scrapes I guess, you can see it's definitely an elk, not a deer, because way up here, which is like 
about eight feet high. You can see where the, the tips of their uh, antlers were digging in there. There's no way a deer would reach that high. Yeah. You know, I'm 6'4", and that's, that's way above my head. So, yeah, it's definitely an elk. So my battery is just about dead, so I'm going to cut this short here. I'm only uh, 20 minutes or so from the house, so uh, yeah, that's a nice little few hour day hike, and a little camp out in the woods and test of my new tent. So uh, I guess I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching, and remember like give us a thumbs up and don't be afraid to subscribe to my channel check it out got some pretty interesting videos on there I think so stay tuned